What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is going to be a buy versus DIY on these solar portable power stations. So in this corner we have the All Powers S700. This is an entry level, nice little power station. This has an output of 700 watts continuous, 1400 watts surge. You've got a couple DC outputs over here, USB, USB-C. You've got two 120 volt outputs. You have a Bluetooth selector right here got a pretty decent little app you can obviously turn on and off all your other uh, DC and your AC outputs you got some lights here this is gonna be really cool for camping it's obviously really small really light really portable um, I think that'd be the perfect little power station for tent camping so we're gonna be putting that up against uh, the DIY this is a power station I made about a year ago uh, I did a video on it it's basically an old computer case um, it's got a thousand watt Renogy inverter I've got this new little MPPT we're gonna be putting in it. This is the Bateria Sunrock 10 amp MPPT. This thing is tiny. Look how small that is. I chose it basically because it's so small and it doesn't need to be mounted any orientation because of a heat sink. You can just kind of stick it in anywhere. Um, this will charge up to 120 watts, which is basically what the All Powers charges at. So it's kind of a good comparison. Um, and then we're gonna be putting a new Redoto Mini in there as well. So. The reason I chose that PC case because it because it just fit a uh, 100 amp hour standard lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, with the new improvements to the battery sizes, we probably could have gone with a smaller PC case, but I honestly couldn't find one that would sort of hold all this stuff. Um, so we're going to be reusing this one, kind of bringing this thing back from the dead. I've had the parts pulled out of it for a while. so. I'm gonna get it assembled and then uh, we're gonna put these kind of through a bunch of different tests and you can decide whether you're a buy or a DIY type of person. Um, obviously this one is gonna be way more portable, more convenient, you can just grab it and go. But if you're someone that likes to build your own stuff, kind of like that, uh, that satisfaction of knowing you built it yourself, DIY might be the way to go for you. So I'll get it put together, we'll do a couple tests and I'll let you make up your mind. All right, so I got the inverter mounted in here. This is a Renogy 1000 watt. I already had this. I've been using this for about a year and a half. Um, if I had a 700 watt Renogy, it'd make a lot better comparison as far as cost and power. But I don't. Uh, I will include the cost at the end because it would actually, um, if I were to use a 700 watt Renogy inverter and a 50 amp hour Redoto, it would actually be almost identical in price to the All Powers. So I'll include that at the end. But I've got the inverter mounted up. Uh, I'm going to show you how, how well this thing fits in this new case before um, it was all I could do. I could just barely squeeze a hundred amp in here with these new Redoto minis. It's uh, I don't think the camera really does it justice, but like, it's just so much smaller and lighter, it's so much more convenient for mounting, but I'm going to pop this in here without shorting the terminals. Got a piece of styrofoam on the top there to keep them from hitting anything. But I mean, look at how much space it has. The thing's just swimming in there compared to the old one. Uh, I'll grab another battery here and show you a direct comparison, but that's going to work pretty well. we'll put, it the, uh, put the little seat belt on it there, get it strapped down. Uh, I'm going to move on to the charge controller here. So, like I said, this is the Bateria. Uh, I'll show you the specs. Max PV voltage is 30. Um, yeah, you can pretty much do all your different battery types. 10 amp charger. I think it said the max solar panel you want to connect to it is 150 watts but uh yeah i'm gonna get it wired up i'm gonna put some uh some ring terminals on it so we can put it on the battery uh, i was gonna use crimps but i'm pretty much out of crimp connectors so just gonna solder these up i figured it'd be a good test for the s700 i'm gonna plug the soldering iron into that we'll see what it pulls and uh, we'll get this thing ready to hook up Okay, we've got the charge controller wired up. We're gonna put the uh, seat belt on the battery, but it looks like we have some lights here. So, I'm sitting at 13.4 volts. Gives you a temperature readout, 28C, 82 Fahrenheit. Garage is a little hot today. 
and no error codes. That's about it. So I think if you hold, uh, you can select your battery type. So we'll try that. Yep. Put it on lithium, and I'm guessing you hold it again. Yep, we're set to lithium, 100% charge. So we'll get this side set up to hook up to a little portable panel, as most um, solar power stations would. So we're getting pretty close here. Okay, we got everything set up. I have the Rodoto 100 amp hour mini strapped down. I did put a shunt on here, I forgot to add that in, but I have just that little uh, cheap A. Lee Amazon shunt for the sake of the video, just for some tests. And then I have this guy just strapped to the back here in case we uh, wanna keep an eye on the numbers, but it does have a Bluetooth app, so I don't think we're really gonna need access to that, but uh, I'm gonna button it up and we will start our first test. Okay, so for test number one, uh, well, I guess the first point we'll give to the All Powers, portability. Uh, overall, portability, not even close. Um, even if I had the smaller battery, the smaller inverter, there's not that many PC cases that are smaller and easier to work with than this one. So for the DIY, um, I'm gonna give the win to the All Powers as far as portability. Second test we're gonna do is the standby power consumption. Uh, that's gonna depend on the uh, the DIY, really on what inverter you choose. That Renogy I have is pretty efficient on standby, so gonna be a tough battle for the little all powers here. Uh, I'm gonna turn this one on first. Inverter is live. We are discharging uh, 0.43 amps at 12 volts. I think that's only around like six to eight watts, depending on this thing. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less. Uh, we'll turn on the AC on the all powers. You do get the little fan startup every time you turn that on, but it shuts off until you actually put a load on it. Just a tiny little fan over here. A little bit noisy, but not too bad. Um, so I'm just going to let these run. We're at 100% on the all powers. We're at 100% on the DIY. Um, I'm going to let them run for about two hours and we'll just see which one has more power. Basically, by the time we come back, I'm going to throw the Blue Eddy into the mix here just for a little extra comparison. Turn on that inverter. We're sitting at 100%. It's almost 3 o'clock. Um, come back in a couple hours and just see how they're doing all right guys we're back it's almost been four hours we are still holding strong at a hundred percent on the little all powers s700 so that is uh pretty surprising i honestly thought this one would be taking the win on this one but we're at 98.4 percent on the diy power station and the blue eddy is sitting at 97 percent so um that one i expected to drop about a percent an hour um, this one I thought honestly would have lost a few percent, but looks like it's pretty efficient in standby and, uh, yeah, 98.4, that's not terrible, but, uh, looks like that one goes to the all powers. So I'm going to get another test set up and I'll show you that next. Okay. I got a couple portable panels set up. I just want to top these batteries off before we do the, uh, discharge test here. So this is a 75 watt portable panel from Elecanta. This has got that nice textured glass front on it. Um, I've been using this panel for a little while. It's pretty nice, I like it. It's got this little barrel connector here, which uh, plugs right into the All Powers S700. So that's convenient. I'm just gonna stick that one in here because the All Powers panel has MC4s on it, which is what I put on the DIY power station. So I'll plug that one in, let it get to charging. We only need to put 2% in it, so it won't be long here. And this is the All Powers SP028 panel. This is almost identical to the uh, SP33 I reviewed in the other video. Very similar panel, but this is a 100 watt. It only has two PV panels in it instead of four. So um, very similar, very nice. Comes with MC4s and then a whole bag of adapters. So I'm going to uh, charge them both up. I'll show you the apps for both of them here in a second. This one is running on the Bateria and the All Powers, like I said, has a little Bluetooth app. So. Um, as you can see, we're charging at 52 watts on the All Powers and 65 watts on the uh, All Powers panel to the DIY power station. Pulling 17 volts from that panel, so doing good. 
Okay, I'm gonna start a discharge test. I bought this cheap little Amazon power meter. I'm gonna set it to kilowatt hours and just pull the battery uh, until it's totally depleted. I'm running my garage lights and this fan over here. Um, I'm gonna set it to run around half the inverter's capacity, maybe a little bit less, just to keep it as efficient as it can be. Um, we'll discharge the battery fully, measure how much power we actually pulled based on the rated power in watt hours and see how efficient it is. All right, we've started the test. The meter is recording. We're pulling about 310 watts and it says it's gonna run for an hour and 17 minutes. So I hope it gets a little bit longer than that, but uh, we'll let it run, discharge completely, and we'll come back and check. All right, the test is complete. I let it uh, go about two hours. Looks like the screen is still alive. It looks like it saves about 5% capacity to protect itself. No inverter though. And we only pulled 408 watt hours, so that's a little bit low. An hour and 15 minutes total runtime, which is pretty accurate based on what the all powers said, but uh, that's a low score. There's our rated capacity of 606 watt hours, so 400 and. Oh, what was it again? 408. Uh, that's around like 65%, so that's not great. I'm gonna get the DIY station set up. We'll run the same test and see if it seems accurate and I might run this one again just to make sure. All right, the DIY capacity test has started. I've got the meter uh, running here. We're gonna start tracking the power. I'm gonna plug the same lights back into it. This is around 275 watts worth of uh, little strip lights. Uh, I'll plug the fan in and then I'll plug the all powers in and charge it. I didn't notice my son had turned this on about an hour ago. So this thing has uh, lost about a percent and a half. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but we'll get the fan started here, get this thing discharging at around 40 to 50% of the inverter's capacity just to keep it fair, and we'll check back in in a couple hours. All right, we're back with the DIY power station. It's been a couple hours, two and a half almost, and we're sitting at 1.1 kilowatt hours uh, pulled from the pack, eight amp hours left in the battery, 12.4 volts, still pulling 38 amps out of the shunt, and we are sitting at 7.9%. So doing really good so far. The efficiency is looking good. We'll see how much beyond zero this shunt will go. Um, I did have a hot spot on this cable here. These are the included Renogy cables. And I noticed this black one has a little bit of a wiggle in it, just south of the, uh, the copper connector there. I think it's, it's probably a bad cable. I'm going to have to get that replaced. Okay. We're down to our last amp hour. Let's see what happens at zero. Still going. I really wish this shunt would have gone into a negative to show how many amp hours beyond the rated capacity we could have pulled, but it doesn't, so we'll let it run a little bit longer and we'll check the uh, total capacity pulled through the inverter. Still pulling 42 amps. Alright guys, we got the uh, beep from the alarm. Oh, that was stupid. That was all my lights. <laughs> Alright, so we did. Let's somehow still powered no i guess it's just taking a minute to shut off i don't know that's weird uh okay there we go so we charge back up to 77 percent we pulled 1.215 kilowatt hours which is very close to the rated capacity of the redoto battery and that's with going through the inverter so the battery did awesome just want to feel it it's not really even warm other than the fact that it's like 90 degrees in the garage right now so that's definitely going to be a win for the diy power station the redoto battery pulled full capacity did amazing the renogy inverter did about 95 percent efficiency so that's definitely a win for this one obviously it depends on what inverter you choose to use but we'll finish charging up the all powers here get it back to 100 percent and then we're going to do a discharge test uh, pull 700 watts for it, make sure it is happy with that, and then we'll, we'll go beyond the, uh, the max rated output and just see what it does. 
Okay, so I've got a little fan plugged into the all powers and I'm gonna turn on this heat gun. That should get us right around 700 watts, which is the max output on this thing. I'm gonna let it run for a little while. We'll pull at least 10% out of the battery. Just make sure it's happy at 700 watts and it doesn't try to shut down. We'll check back in in a few minutes. Okay, it's been running without issue for a few minutes now. We've pulled about 10% of the capacity out of the battery, no issues. So I think that's a pass. I'm gonna shut this down. Have a look at the fan here. I can hear the fans running a little bit. Just on a fairly low speed, nothing crazy. It doesn't seem too hot. So I'm going to do the heat gun again on max output. And it does trip the overload pretty quickly, which is to be expected. We'll see if it turns back on. Yep, comes back on without issue. It doesn't lock itself out. Try the low speed again. And everything works as it's supposed to. Okay, so that's pretty much going to do it for this buy versus DIY portable power station episode. So I'm going to give you a little breakdown of the pricing. Um, as is the way the DIY sits, it costs around $884 uh, Canadian. If I were to use the smaller Redoto battery and the 700 watt inverter, you could get that price down to $610 Canadian. And the all powers seems to vary between $599 and $499 on Amazon, just depending if it's on sale or what kind of promotions they have going on at the time. So everything performed pretty well with the S700 being a little low on the efficiency test. I'm going to reach out to them and see if that's kind of to be expected or if I have an underperforming unit here. So let me know in the comments, would you prefer the store-bought all-in-one or the DIY power station? The store-bought is going to be a little more convenient, a little more portable, definitely lighter. You're not going to beat that with the DIY, but the DIY is a little more user-friendly. If you were to have a part failure, you can just get in there and replace it yourself. So I'm going to put the links to everything as well as some discount codes in the description. If you like anything from this video, be sure to check them out. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.